Okay, so welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Dana Mortensen. I'm the Executive Director of World Savvy, and it is a privilege to be interviewing two students um, from Minerva, which is a university program that's shaking up the higher ed structure. So I'm really pleased to have um, Shane and Lara with me today. Um, and they're going to tell us a little bit about their experience and how it differs from sort of a traditional college university model and how that's been impacting them as learners. Um, so to start, um, Shane DeVore and Lara Bach, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourselves um, and tell us a little bit about Minerva and why the structure of this university program is so different um, from what you've experienced. Um, Yes, okay. Uh, I'm Lara Bach. Uh, I'm from Brazil. I'm 18 years old. Um, I came to Minerva after doing one semester in a traditional university, a federal university in Brazil. And um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. And you. Sure, yeah. Um, so my name is Shane. Um, I'm a student from Canada. Uh, and I came to Minerva after doing uh, a gap year um, where I was learning a lot about education. And um, I decided not to go to university because I know the current model has really resonated with me and what I want to get out of my education. Um, so I was happy to find out about Minerva uh, last year, and I was a member of the founding class uh, that year. Fantastic. So why don't you to walk us through a little bit of how Minerva differs from a traditional uh, university or, or college program? Um, Minerva is... is um, it's, it's a university program. Um, we, we, we offer an undergraduate degree and we have a very distinct experience here in Minerva because uh, during the four years of undergraduate, uh, we travel to seven different cities um, because our classes uh, happen in an online platform which we call the Active Learning Forum. And um, this platform was designed and envisioned um, by, by Minerva, and uh, it uses uh, several principles uh, of how students learn effectively by uh, our Dean Stephen Coughlin, which is a great neuroscientist who learned a lot about how the mind works when it comes to uh, learning and education. And, and the fact that our classes are online allows us to, to travel to different countries while we graduate. Cool. Yeah, so I would say that um that was a pretty good explanation. Like, uh, another thing I'd add on to that, though, is that um, our curriculum is quite different than what you see at a traditional university, um, especially in the first year, where there's a really strong focus on uh, cognitive skills, uh, something we call habits of mind and foundational concepts. So instead of focusing on like, memorization of content, uh, which is typical in like, first-year university classes, um, at Minerva, they really do kind of an introduction to thinking, um, how to analyze problems, how to communicate yourself, um, and those kind of what are usually kind of used as like soft skills are actually at the foreground of our curriculum. So if you're taking a science class, you're learning less about the biologic, uh, like memorizing biological facts or physics equations. And it's more about how does the scientific method work? Uh, how do you conduct research? How do you actually apply those things to the real world setting? Um, and these kind of skills are um, what you spend the first year doing. Um, and then the curriculum really builds into um, allowing students to go into an area of interest um, and complete like a capstone project. Um, which is an applied learning uh, project, which is the culmination of all the things they've learned throughout the four years. Um, so I'd say the curricular aspects are also very different. Uh, like Laura said, the, the pedagogy um, is definitely different. We study only in small seminars, um, but also what we're learning is also quite different than a typical university. And um, yeah, this is primarily a higher education. It's an undergraduate degree. We, we finish and we graduate with a diploma in, in the field that we major in. Great. Um, so tell me a little bit about, I mean, this obviously has real world connections, but as you think about what you want to do after graduation, how do you see the way that you're learning preparing you for that reality in whatever field you're interested in and maybe speak a little bit more to the, the, the field you are interested in um, post-graduation? Yeah. Um, so when I came, um, when I was looking at Minerva originally, um, the reason why I took the gap year was because uh, in high school I became quite interested in K-12 education. Um, so I, I was taking a gap year and I was looking at different education models and that's, that's really how I came across Minerva. And a lot of the projects that I was working on that year, um, it was kind of like about like, the future of learning and uh, how you can bring education to more people. Um, and a lot of the questions that we were asked, I realized like, there were really things that 
um, I can learn about in school necessarily because I was working on new problems that haven't been solved yet. Um, I realized that what I needed was really more of a skill set to be able to solve the problems. Um, I needed a way to know how to like, acquire information that was rigorous. I had to analyze that information. I needed ways to communicate my ideas. Um, I needed to understand the, the like second order effects of like whatever interventions I would advocate for were. Um, and these were all things that didn't seem to align with like, the typical kind of content-based uh, models that I was seeing at universities. Um, so I, I still kind of I my hope right now is still to go into K-12 education. Um, and I, I really felt like a lot of the problems that we we're facing there. I mean, if I had I have a degree in education, I can learn about I guess lots of different content areas. But what I said to me about Minerva was really the opportunity to learn about uh, acquiring a skill set, um, which would allow me to tackle not just this problem, but like really any problem that I'd work on. Excellent. And Laura, what about you? Um, um, I think um, what attracted me more to Minerva was the fact that um, Minerva has this uh, Minerva proposes that students are going to learn and, and form themselves as professionals uh, through debate and through active, actively participating in class. And um, I feel like this really prepares us for uh, whatever area we want to work in the future because we have a lot of interactions in our jobs regardless of what we choose to do. And it seems like the traditional um, university does not really account for that, only kind of outside of the classroom through debate club, clubs or something. Um, so I think that immersing the students in this environment of changing, like exchanging ideas and and debating is very important. And I I really like that about Minerva. And it's something that in Brazil, it's really no one talks about this. No one talks about the fact that we don't learn through our voices. We just learn through a professor speaking. So that's, for me, that was very important. Excellent. And I had the privilege um, at South by Southwest to have be part of something Minerva, a, a student facilitated exercise called the Wisdom in the Room, which I think reflected some of sort of the unique ways that you all learn together in the classroom. Can you think of a specific experience, um, that, a learning experience, and how it was structured that you can share with the group that exemplifies the Minerva model? Uh, uh, you so, can go first. Okay, so, um, sure. So one of the classes I really liked the first year was one called um, empirical analysis. Um, so I kind of mentioned before, like, in our science classes, instead of learning about um, content and the memorization of that, it's more about, uh, like, science holistically in the process of science. Um, so I remember there is, like, a class where we were learning about how to um, design research studies. Um, and this, this kind of, uh, the reason why I like this example is because it really shows why the seminar format works a lot better than a lecture uh, for different pedagogical reasons. So like, I mean, the first one is something called deliberate practice, which is kind of getting real-time feedback on what you're saying so you can understand like, where you're going wrong, and then you can correct based off that information. So it kind of creates this feedback loop in the classroom. Um, in a typical lecture, it's just kind of information going one way, and you don't actually get that feedback loop. So in this situation, um, we would go into breakout groups, um, which is like a functionality on our online learning platform, where you can go in with groups of like three or four students, um, and in the, our task in these breakout groups was to design a research study um, based on some constraints that they gave us. Um, and then once the breakout groups ended, we went back to the class. Um, and different groups would kind of present whatever um, research methodology they came up with. Um, and then everyone in your class could vote on whether they agreed or disagreed with different aspects of your methodology. And if they disagreed, um, we could pull them up. And then they would have a debate with you about whether or not um, you're like introducing confounding variables or whatever else. Uh, and and that, that kind of exercise really showed that, um, first of all, you're getting lots of different students involved. So not only the students presenting, but also as the students are presenting, everyone in the class has to be analyzing whether what they're saying is correct or not. Um, and then you also get to have a conversation about that. Um, and then the professor is facilitating all of that as well. So they can guide the direction of the conversation to make sure it's focused on one of these learning objectives that I was talking about, one of these skills that we're trying to uh, pick up. Um, I think a moment that I really liked in class and really showed me um, how much nervous curriculum is designed for, um, for for many situations in life, not only in your professional life. Uh, we have this multimodal communications class uh, when we learn several ways and several skills on how 
to express ourselves, or how to analyze speech, how to analyze presentations. And um, we had, uh, as Shane said, about breakout groups, we had to go into breakout groups and uh, and we had to figure out how to present a piece of information to different publics, to a scientific community, to an audience that is not scientifically um, uh, very skilled, um, to an audience that's, um, that's of, made of uh, composed of kids, so uh, we had to tailor our text and our presentation according to who we were going to present it with. And uh, I felt like that moment I realized that I, I, that would never be possible to do in a classroom without doing a lot of math, like people talking loudly and bothering each other. And in the in the platform, it was very it ran very smoothly, and uh, I really felt like I learned a lot from that and for the fact that I was actively engaging and learning how to use that skill later in life and, and right now as well. Excellent. And Barbara has a question that she wrote in the chat that I want to, I believe it was for um, uh, Shane when you were talking about an example of learning in the classroom about how you were determining what was in demand in the community, whether and whether you decided on your own what to contribute. Uh, sorry, what was the question asking? I am just reading it here. I'm, I'm a little bit confused about, um, you know, what's looking at. Barbara, did you have a clarification? Or are, you can type in the chat box if you wanted to know specifically about one of the examples that Shane was giving. Um, and we can come back to that. And, and in the meantime, um, one of my, oh, hand raised. OK, Barbara, why don't you go ahead and ask your question? Go ahead, Barbara. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. Oh yeah, I was I was asking um what you know what was the deciding factor as far as you know what it is that they wanted to contribute was it initiated by the program or was it their undertaking from you know on their own initiative was it, was it something that they decided I'm going to I'm going to go out into the community based on something that you know I you know I have in mind that I want to you know give out to the community or you know to service the community or was it something initiated by you know them deciding oh, th this is the demand that the community has, and how then can the program help me, you know, bring that, uh, bring it to life? What was the deciding factor? Do you mean like in, in coming to the school in, in the first place, or I'm still a little confused? Or, yeah, Barbara, are you, um, Barbara, I'm not sure if you're talking about a specific, um, they were describing just the entire university experience as a whole. Um, so was there a particular part of the class that, that was described that you're interested in? No, as a whole, I was just wondering. I mean, what, what, how did you know? How did they decide what what contributions they were going to make to the community? Was where it was influence of, of their own de, um, own decision, or where it was influence based on a demand that they they they, they saw in that particular community? Um, Maybe let so me take a crack at. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I, I I believe that an answer to this question, I in my personal experiences, that Nerva. Uh, is about um, sharing things in the classroom. It's about active learning through our peers and through the things we have to share about um, academic content in the classroom. And uh, when you make a decision to come to Minerva, um, you need to know that uh, when you are in the classroom, in the active learning forum, you need to contribute in order for other people to learn. So this is the concept of flipped classroom. You learn the content before, and when you're in class, you just apply it, and you learn through other people's application as well. So I'm not sure if I got the, the question correctly, but uh, if you're asking how much we chose to contribute uh, in our classes um, among our community, I would say that every student that comes to Minerva needs kind of have this sense of uh, sharing um, opinions in the classroom, sharing um, the things we think about, and as, since we are a very uh, small community, like I think there are 120 students uh, in my class, um, we, we are very close to each other and it is important to be actively participating in making this new university because it's a 
it's a very new university. It started less than five years ago. So uh, when you make the decision to come, you already know that you need to be actively engaging and sharing many things with everyone. Lara, thank you so much. I'm wondering now, just sort of pivoting off of that, if you can describe um, for your peers, um, tell me a little bit about the peer cohort of people in Minerva with you, these 120 students. Where are they coming from? How sort of what is the actual community of learners um, comprised of? And what are their experiences like? Yeah, sure. So we're about 80% international, um, including us two um, in, our, in our class. Uh, and um, the community has really been amazing. I, I mean, I, I came to Minerva originally because I was interested in education. I thought they were doing something very interesting and something that was very necessary um, in higher education. Um, but I, I also realized as I was here that um, a huge, huge part of the value here is that you're bringing together a group of people um, that, one, solve these problems in education and want to take their learning seriously enough to kind of take this risk, but also um, the, you're very kind of academically strong students that show up in Minerva um, and there's like a rigorous admissions process and um, the, the classes are um, in like concentrations and everything due to the whole um, high standard of academic rigor. Um, so, um, you know, the, these students have definitely had options to go to other places and I think something that's really cool is that um, a lot of students decide to turn down other very established, very prestigious universities to come and try something completely different, which means that a lot of the students here care a lot more about kind of the substance of their experience more than kind of uh, maybe the prestige surrounding it. So they, they care a lot more about like their actual experience than about a title. Um, so you get kind of like, I guess, more like down to earth and like uh, people that are here really just to learn and to really experience the world, to travel around the world together, um, a little bit more adventurous. Um, some students are a little more entrepreneurially inclined. Um, and yeah, so I, I think that um, you not only do you get this international cohort, but you just get this like, international cohort of like pretty adventurous, uh, pretty um, inspiring students. Yes, um, I see Barbara is asking what is the goal of Minerva as far as technology integration and global connectedness is concerned. Um, I think that um, through technology, you can you can achieve great things in this area of connecting people all around the world. For example, I think um, a huge example of this is the fact that we have great professors teaching us from all around the world. I had an excellent professor telling me um, about uh, teaching me about um, a formal one of the classes formal analysis, which is very uh, centered on logic and argumentation and um, his, uh, he's from, he lives in Budapest, so uh, besides time zones, we didn't have any problem in uh, getting in touch with him and even connecting with him in a, a non-professional level, like um, being close to the professor and being able to, to ask him questions about the content or about his work, about his field, which is really nice. And we do all of that through the platform. And um, yeah, I think... Um, you mentioned, especially in the age of social media in the chat, um, I think, um, I, I, I really believe that um, students our age, uh, my our generation, like people that are 17, 18, and until like 20 something, um, we, we, grow, we grew up with cell phones and internet all around us, and it doesn't make sense to go to a classroom and having professors telling you to put your internet aside because that is exactly that that is a tool that should be used in order to to um, to help students learn through this medium that we use it all the time for for our own pleasure. We can also learn through that, and that's what exactly what we do through the action learning platform. Uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't see that. Like, um, like really, what the scope of what Minerva is doing with the technology is just like facilitating the, these class seminars. Um, it's it's really like there's an educational kind of vision set for Minerva, which is like they wanted to provide this global opportunity, they want to be able to teach in small seminars, um, and what this online technology does is just it allows a medium for all of that to happen in an efficient uh, way. Um, so, like, it's not really just technology for the sake of technology, and, like, like we're going to put, like, an online university or something like that. Like, the, uh, the online aspects of the school are quite minimal, actually. It's only the time that we spend during class every single week on the seminar, and everything else, the city immersion, um, us doing our assignments together, um, the living with your cohort, like, that's all in person. Um, so the only difference between us and the regular college at our card is just that instead of walking to a building to take a lecture, um, we, we have software that facilitates uh, highly interactive seminars. 
Um, and then to answer your question about that, how do you connect with those disconnected or lacking connectivity? Um, I say like first you just kind of start with the, what is the scope of what Minerva is trying to do. I think that there's like lots of great educational initiatives aimed at um, providing like mass educational content or whatever else there is. Um, the scope of Minerva specifically is to provide a university program, um, and the, the, the scope of technology isn't to uh, like have like a like a MOOC or like a massively open online course or something. The technology we built is to facilitate small class seminars, um, which will train people that come through our program to make kind of decisions that influence or to be people that will be global leaders um, and to give them a very high quality education. So it, it's investing in the people that come here to make impact and change and responsible change in their lives. Um, it's not necessarily about massively distributing education materials um, to answer your question about social media and all that. I think that's a little bit outside of the scope of what we're doing, but also a very noble cause. Um, yes, I think I think then I can't um, talk at this moment. Uh, she's having audio issues, so um, she wants us to share a bit about how what we are learning applies to higher ed generally. What do we think needs to shift more broadly in higher ed to leverage the gains Minerva is providing to you? Um, do, do you want to answer this? I feel like you have shared the Sure, sure, yeah. Um, so it's about uh, what needs to shift more broadly in higher ed. Okay, great. Um, I think there's like the pretty extensive notion right now is that. You know, we can't just keep charging the students so much money for content that's free. Um, and, like, I mean, students know how to use the Internet, and if they're, like, self-directed enough, uh, they can really get a higher-quality education. So it's just, like, the first thing that needs to be done is really, I think, to make use of the resources that are already out there. Um, Minerva doesn't teach any introductory classes. If we want to take Econ 101 or, like, Intro to Calc, we can, we can do that on our own time uh, through online courses. And it's almost it's a moral kind of for a university to charge you for that when that exists. So what they do is they direct us to those resources. So by the time that we get to class, and you know we're already prepared and we already have that introductory knowledge. And what, what, what they understand is the role of the university really then is to bring students together and to have them have like deeper conversations about these things, learn things that uh, would be harder for you to learn online by yourself, um, and create an environment for collaboration um, amongst students that are like-minded. Um, and then also how do you apply that learning in a real setting? And um, that's really what I was talking about the Capstone project earlier. Um, it's really, in the last two years, there's a really strong focus um, on you creating something. Um, whether you're a computer science student, you want to create some sort of, uh, and you learn to look at an right now, so the, the generic example would be to create an app. But maybe, like, I'm interested in a kid's health school, and I might want to start, uh, like, a school model or something like that. Um, and really, I think colleges and universities need to start leveraging the, the personnel that they have available and the students and have them, uh, instead of just disseminating information, there needs to be a shift more to kind of collaboration, actually working on real projects so students are actually equipped to work on things once they graduate. And just, uh, be Thank you. Time. We um, so I thought that my audio has been a little troublesome, but I thought maybe you could share with us just to wrap up. Um, and if anyone has questions, please type it in the chat box. But if you could just share one story or conversation or project that sort of exemplifies the impact that Minerva's had on you as we as we wrap up our session, that'd be really great. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I do have a story. Um, for my, our final, every semester in the in our freshman year, we need to do a final project um, that comprehends um, the eight C's, the skills we learned during the semester in each class. And um, last semester, I did a final project on um, the fact that back in my city in Brazil, um, they are trying to, the mayor is trying to forbid Uber to act because Uber did not exist in my town. And now Uber, the, the, the car sharing company that rides people everywhere, um, is, um, they're trying to forbid it because it's kind of against the, the legislation. Uh, they don't pay taxes and everything. Um, but they don't really have good arguments uh, to forbid that, and um, the taxi, like the taxi and the, um, the cab system, is very broken. Like people are not comfortable with that. And um, so, for my final project, I wrote a letter to the mayor, um, applying the ACs that I, I learned. For example, one of our skills learned in that semester was fallacies, and uh, we learned how to spot fallacies in someone's speech and how to mitigate that, and um, I remember that I watched the mayor doing an interview and saying why 
Uber should not be allowed in our city, and he was very, very fallacious. And, um, and among the other um, problems that I found uh, in the fact that he was trying to forbid the free market to run freely in my town. Uh, so I wrote, I wrote my final project. Uh, it can be literally anything you want. So my final project was a letter to him. And uh, I remember sharing it in social media after I submitted it, after I got my grade. And um, it had so many likes and sharings that people actually mobilized and start, started to share my work and, and the main spots of it. And it kind of, I don't, I don't think my work itself got to the mayor, but somehow the mayor knew that people were very, very upset about the fact that he did not want to allow Uber. And, uh, and then actually Uber was allowed after all of the conflicts. And I really, I really felt like I accomplished something with that because it really raised the awareness of um, a very unfair situation happening and um, how I kind of helped to, to raise this concern in my community back in Brazil. Um, I have an example as well, but I know that it's 3.30, uh, so if we need to end up, that's great too. Yeah, I think we actually yeah. have to um, we have to wrap up. Everybody's taking off. But Lauren, Shane, thank you so much for sharing. This was really fantastic, and it will be recorded and available on the website. So thanks again for joining us and talking about the Minerva experience. And thanks, everyone, for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.